Al Cola, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Aqua Brain TV. On this show, we chat snow skating with Ryan Wallbillig. Coming to us from my old stomping grounds, you can find Ryan at Hayak underscore snow victim on Instagram. That's Hayak underscore snow victim on Instagram. Hey, Ryan, thanks for coming on. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Right on. So, so where are you? Uh, you're in the Cascades somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah. I live up at Snoqualmie Pass. Oh, sick. So, yeah, yep, yeah. just about an hour from Seattle. We're right up in the mountains. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's uh, that's my old stomping grounds. Are you at Hayak or where are you at? Yeah, yeah. I live in one of the condo buildings at Hayak. <laughs> nice. <laughs> can't can't beat that, right? It's right out your oh, door. Yeah, it's been pretty <laughs> sweet. <laughs> So, uh, so how, so introduce yourself and how, how, when were you first exposed to snow skating? Uh, so, I mean, I'm Ryan, but, uh, I'm 22 and I grew up in the Seattle area. Um, grew up skiing and snowboarding at Snoqualmie my whole life. And one person in my building randomly had a little Burton junkyard when I was a kid and we just play around with it on the sledding hill and, uh, on like real soft slushy spring days. And, I think it was probably like freshman year of high school. I saw the the Lib Powskis and uh, yeah. I knew I had to get one. <laughs> so I got that and uh, ended up getting it all set up on a week I had off school and it snowed two feet every day up here and oh, never looked back. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. The, I, I mean, the first time I rode the 50, it was like, it was, it was one of those days at Alpental where you looked behind you and the track was already filled in, you know, yeah. and I like, I'm getting chills right now. Just even thinking about it, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like just yeah, changed my life. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have, I've had so many amazing days on that board with uh run with Pat over at Alpental. Just nobody up there on, on those LP Tuesdays. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. It's been a lot better when it's uh, midweek yeah yeah for sure <laughs> you uh are you do you like it over there by silver fur on that on that run you ever go back uh on the cat track oh or, yeah. i mean i yeah, mean on the uh cross country yeah over by the power lines and stuff yeah yep yeah it's a sweet zone <laughs> Dude, yeah. you're all over the place over there that's awesome I kind of miss it. I miss it. You ever, uh, you ever made it out this way to Boise? Uh, I've never been to Boise in the, in the winter now. It's been quite a while. Uh, I've been up to the, uh, Boyd Hill events up in Northern Idaho a couple of times. That's yeah. super fun. Yeah, yeah. I haven't made it down yet. So do you, do you like to, do you try to make it to all the events or what? Yeah, I've only made it to all of them. I think one year, but most years I make it to like two or three of them at least. I usually try to do Boyd Hill and then I do the uh, Squirrel Skate Jam and the Massacre out here and then usually Hurricane Ridge. Um, the one I usually miss is the, the Whistler Gathering event. It's yeah. I end up being out of town. <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's a hard one too, right? <laughs> Especially nowadays. I don't even know if you can cross the border right now. Yeah, yeah, I think it just opened back up actually recently, at least for for Washington State residents. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably not for me and Idaho. Yeah, well, I don't know. You guys share a border still, so. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe yeah, I guess like the Californians, they can't, they can't. Yeah. Cross. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So what? Uh, so what? Yeah. What kind of gear you do you ride? Do you ride for anybody? Uh, yeah, so I've been riding for Hovland for a few years now. Uh, so I've been riding the Buckshot as my daily. Um, I kind of just prefer the bigger boards. I, I I skateboard the opposite stance. I snow skate, so skate tricks don't really translate for me. Okay. Uh, that's... So I, yeah, I, I come at it more, I think, from like a surf side. Um, I just like to haul ass and take big old turns and big airs. <laughs> so I like, yeah. the, I like the big boards. They're fun. Um, but yeah, so I ride the buckshot mostly, even in the park, and then the the bubble on the deep days. Things super fun. 
Yeah, definitely uh, check out his uh, snow victim. Wait, no, I'm sorry. It's a uh, Hayak underscore snow victim on Instagram. Cause yep. dude, you'll see, you'll see some pretty sick runs through the trees there. <laughs> You're just charging, man. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> It's nice to see. Uh, it's good to see people charging. I mean, the old guys charge as well, but it's good to see see some younger younger people. Just you know, you do you ride a lot with Adrian? Yeah, yeah. So he actually lives uh, over at Elvin Hall now, so he's up here too. And we yeah, we ride all the time. <laughs> good, yeah, good people. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, and then as for the rest of my gear, uh. I usually rock the like the Vans MTs just because I like the skate shoe feel. Um, yeah, um, and they're pretty warm and dry uh, for the most part. <laughs> and then uh, like on powder days, I'll I'll throw on some like hiking gaiters around my ankles, and I find those help keep the the boots a lot drier. But I do the same it. thing. Yeah, yeah. I do. <laughs> the gaiters are game changers, and those MTs yeah. are like, it's it's that's exactly what I ride, right? So that's. Yeah. Um, it's you can you can really feel you can feel the board I, and uh you know one of yeah. the things i don't know about you but because you were just, you were saying you snowboarded but uh for me the snowboard boots were so stiff and and very bulky that when i when i transitioned to the skate shoe i'm like oh you know it's like one yeah. of those moments <laughs> <laughs> yeah well I'm actually mostly a skier when I'm not on my skate. And so, yeah, it was like even more so for me. Because <laughs> yeah. Even so, so stiff. I mean, I love skiing still, but man, the boots suck. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I know. Cause you got, you always got to kind of, you got to kind of walk forward, right? You're always like yeah. kind of leaning forward. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I kind of enjoy walk. Yes, it's a maybe it's a little guilty pleasure. Just enjoy watching <laughs> skiers walk around. The oh, definitely. Yeah, I work in the the rental shop up here at Snoqualmie, and it's a blast watching people try to figure it out. Sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> so unnatural. My daughter, my daughter tried it one time. Uh, you you know Chapel, Chapel's up there. Yeah, and uh, yep. Chapel took took her out. Was it Chapel or Jamie? It might have been Jamie Donahue actually. Now that I think about it, one of the two took her, took her out and, and tried to teach her to, to ski. And she got back and she was like, my feet are feel like they're bleeding. <laughs> she was like, I can't do this anymore. I got the wrong boots. Like, all right, you're snow skating from now on. <laughs> so that's yeah, pretty cool. So what, yeah, yeah, that's, I mean, I'm telling you, I've, I've worked up there at, at Snoqualmie a few seasons as well um started in guest services and then when I turned 18 I went to lifts and and then uh took a few years off and then came back and worked lifts again for a couple seasons and <laughs> god it's just you know there's something about the community up there it's uh oh yeah it's it's good times definitely so what kind of goals yeah. do you have for for snow skating really uh I've just always wanted to just push my own riding and the sport just to see how far it can go. Um, I don't necessarily think it needs to go in the direction that like skiing and snowboarding have gone, but in my mind, I just want to prove that to people in general, that what can be done on a snowboard, at least in the big mountain scene can be done on a skate too. Um, yeah. Yeah. I just want to push the limits kind of in big mountain riding, see how steep and, deep we can go <laughs> so do you spend a lot of time up there on chair two or yeah yeah so i spend a lot of time in alpenthal and the backcountry over there and then i do a lot of touring too okay um and a lot of like side country here at high act too just kind of hiking out into the kind of backcountry zones and that's like the beauty of it snow skating right you can just yeah you know it's it's a very very cumbersome to unstrap all the time and you know yeah. haul that thing around so not oh yeah no great <laughs> yeah not that the the weight differential like between a snowboard and a snow skate is is super different i don't i don't know maybe some snowboards might actually even be lighter 
than some of the yeah snow skates. honestly nowadays they're they're getting pretty light some of them but i don't know there's uh i mean adrian rides a couple of top decks that are the uh the carbon top and bottom sheets and okay those things are pretty light are those um, k is that what k man's doing are they k man decks or yeah yeah so he's been toying with the the carbon fiber and yeah definitely definitely makes a nice poppy board yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's awesome man <laughs> it's so cool <laughs> So you have uh do you have any sort of uh you know big mountain riding? What about like um air any air goals, like air airing out goals? Um honestly, I've never really been one to do like a whole lot of tricks. So like just always had like a dream trick of doing a backflip and some stuff like that. But um not not really. I just like flying through the air for the most part and seeing how big I can go. <laughs> That's so sick. <laughs> hey there you know it's cool is there's nothing wrong with that that's like yeah. you're 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 far above a lot of people <laughs> that are doing yeah. it, you know well the way i see it there's a lot of different sides to snow skating like you have like your surf influence definitely and you have your like punk and skate influence a lot too and the way i see it, it's just not my style to be going out and doing all the skate tricks and stuff it's not really what i enjoy most about it i like to find that flow state and just follow that yeah i i feel you i'm i you know save save your body too right yeah <laughs> like, plus when you're when you get into that flow state like you're talking about i mean it's it's like it's something else you can't oh yeah you can't find it anywhere else you know it's just amazing it's another another feeling <laughs> <laughs> well i do i like i said the the clips you post on your instagram amazing right i i was like sitting there watching clips you know for a couple hours yesterday actually that's a lot Damn, i appreciate it <laughs> that's a lot i wasn't watching for a couple hours but through a couple hours i was watching clips right so periodically <laughs> amongst everything else that i was doing uh all right, you caught me in a lie. I only watched a couple <laughs> of clips, but they were pretty sick. Damn it. I still appreciate it. <laughs> I feel like this interview is not going too well. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, um, <laughs> all right. So I got to uh, just just because, you know, I, I talk to a lot of builders and and, you know, snow skating is is a community, as, as you know, especially being up at the past, like you, you feel that, uh, you know, serpentine and stuff like that. So um being a hovland rider does it does it how does that the oversee production does that does that weigh into to anything for you not necessarily i mean of course there's always going to be people that are going to give you shit for running a company that they don't maybe like but uh I just, I love the way the boards ride and they're made in the same factory as Nitro Snowboards and a lot of other big snowboard companies. So the quality's there and they're super fun boards. So I don't, I don't really see the issue with it. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, personally, I, I ride LibTech stuff and I, you know, I don't know. I, I just, I just do. And I like that. Um, I like what they put out but I've heard really good things about the buckshot in particular being just a, and the Bubba being a good, good board for, for deeper stuff. So I know that uh, they've, I know that there's, there's like this, this fine line, right. Where they're doing a lot of good for snow skating, I feel. Right. Yeah. So, so there's, there's the builders, right. And then, then and uh, Hovland is reaching people that a lot of the builders can't because of exactly you know I don't know what you know I was trying to get Dan on to talk about it and he he pointed me in your direction which is which is perfectly fine I I love you know I'm so glad I'm talking to you right you're you're in the youth and you're charging right you're the future of the sport or this activity which is freaking awesome and i love um you know i was trying to get him to you know to talk about you know well 
because I don't know, does he come and de- does he show up at the events and is he, is he trying to be part of the community or? Yeah. So from what I understand, they, they go to a lot of the events uh, out in the Midwest. Uh, okay. cause that's where at least Dan is based. Um, and so he doesn't get to make it out here very often, partly just because he's dealing with all the business side of things. Uh, sure. Obviously, so that takes a lot of work, um, making sure production is all going right, especially with COVID and everything. <laughs> right. Uh, but, but yeah, I think they would, I think they'd make it out if they had the time, definitely. Um, but they definitely try to make sure they're in tune, I think, with the community, at least somewhat. Um like they're always down to send out boards and sponsor events and stuff like that. We just want to get more people out on boards and having fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that's, that's a big part of it. Right. And, and that's why, that's what I do appreciate what I wanted to tell Dan, you know, that, that I, I do appreciate that, that he's, he's getting boards to resorts and in the rental departments or, you know, out at, at snowboard shops and stuff like that. Like I'll, I'll see Hovland stuff around. And so, that's really it's really cool like hey if you're if you're exposing people to it that's a big plus you know without oversaturating the market right (laughs) i think it's like (laughs) i don't know and that because you were talking about the junkyard right and i think a lot of people fell into like oh my buddy had a junkyard right because they're they just overproduce that you know so I, I actually, the last episode, um, I interviewed Steve Frank and, uh, yeah. so I don't know if you're familiar with, with him, but, um, you know, we were, we were kind of talking yeah, about I that. Met him a long time. <laughs> he's, he's a character. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He's fun. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, I mean, anyway, I don't know. I, I didn't want to, didn't want to talk too much about, about that aspect, but I did want to bring it up. Um, so, uh, so how about these, how about competitions? Have you, have you won any of the competitions or, um, I'm trying to think, I think I won the park jam at, uh, Hurricane Ridge the first year I went, um, I think I was like 16 oh, sick. or 17. Um, that's a super fun event. I love the, the jam style, uh, events like that. And then I'm trying to think, I, I technically won the massacre in 2020, but because of COVID, uh, it was all just word of mouth and there's only like 10 people that showed up. So I don't know if you can really count that. <laughs> yeah, actually, you know, I think, um, I think cause I did an interview with Tim Levitt and yeah. there were pictures. So in that video, in the, uh, in that video, there's pictures, I believe, of you, and and he talks about how you won. And yeah, it was like, like the Bakers were there, and I don't Yo. know, like Brian was Brian there. Um, yeah, I think Brian was there, and Adrian came out. Yeah, it was very yeah. very small, <laughs> but it's yeah. awesome, you know. It's like got to keep it going. Hey, yeah, definitely. I mean, come on, it was a fun race. <laughs> The yeah, what? Get you with all the uh, sun cups because it'd been a few weeks since they closed. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> you know, the last so last um last year, the massacre was supposed to be on a certain date, and so I planned a trip. And I, I've got a friend, and I he let me crash in his A-frame up there at the pass, and and uh, it, uh Jason Young, he's a he's a lift lift mechanic. Okay. He's the Alpental Knights guy. All right. Anyway, so he let me he let me crash in his place and and uh so I get up there and I find out oh they changed the date. <laughs> so I'm like, oh crap. Yeah, yeah. But but I went and the reason I the reason I bring this up is because I went and hiked back to well, I took the took the crossover or well, I guess what I take. I took the uh cross country, I think over to to the serpentine and i i took one run on it and they hadn't done anything to it and it was like no. it was death dude i had to i had to get off like I, yeah <laughs> i mean that it's funny because that that run if if it isn't if it isn't like maintained 
gets really oh, good. Okay. I mean, yeah. <laughs> even when it is maintained, it's like pretty, pretty good little run to have a race on for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. Pretty easy to fly off into a uh, tree well in there. <laughs> Oh, sh yeah. So what, what happened last, uh, last massacre? Oh, so the rules in the massacre have kind of changed a bit through the years, uh, with like the summit kind of being a part of it now and stuff like that. And I, I didn't realize there's a rule that where if you fell down, you were, uh, canceled out because in years past you'd get knocked down you could just hop back on your board and keep riding and so I hopped back on my board and uh like the first year I did there's strip just no rules and like you could duck into the trees if you wanted to and pop back out like if that was the route you said was fastest you could take it and so I fell down or I, yeah I fell down got back on my board cut off a bit through the trees and popped back in and I guess I cut someone off and they were uh, pretty pissed about it and <laughs> just swerved at me. And I was like, didn't know what was going on. I was like, whatever, fuck you, dude, and kept going. And then went down and, and passed Baker. And uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize I was disqualified. And so I made kind of a sketchy pass and finish and get off. And that dude comes flying down and just from behind just kicks me in the back onto the ground. I'm like, what oh, the shit. fuck, dude? <laughs> He's just screaming at me. I'm like, I don't know what I did wrong, man. Oh, uh, but yeah, at least I know that now. Uh, so yeah, because originally it's uh, just full on no rules, Chinese downhill, but it's changed a little bit over the years, I guess. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> well, you know, I hope you guys were able to like make up after that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm just there to have a good time. So I was no worries about being disqualified. I was like, I, I wouldn't have done that if I knew that was the case. <laughs> I'm just there to have fun. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. a, it's really a good community. It's funny, though, because you said like the little there's a little like punk, little punk side, the little punk flavor yeah. to it, right? So yeah. <laughs> it's funny we can all get in the parking lot and have a good time you know but it's <laughs> you know. oh crap so what uh what's uh what do you got planned for this this winter uh don't have a ton necessarily planned out but i'm just hoping to do a lot of filming uh i graduated college this last spring so i have a lot more time congratulations now thank you um so yeah, I'm hoping maybe go up to Revelstoke, do some riding up there and travel around the Pacific Northwest a bit. And then in the spring, I'll be heading down to Hood for pretty much all of May. Just going to live out on my hook down there and nice. ride. That'll be fun. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just promoting, just, just keep raising that stoke. Yep. You know, that's. Yeah. Yeah. That's bring a whole takes. bunch of boards and just giving away down there find people who want to ride sick sick yeah well if you ever make it out to out to boise let me know yeah yeah adrian's been trying to get me to come out to that quarter pipe event in i think it's like june or july um for a few years now so maybe i'll make it out there yeah and there's you know believe it or not there's some really good snow up here in the in the mountains i mean we get some yeah it, it's it's cool because it stays stays fairly dry you know so it, yep. it just you know it can be it, it's really cold right but you're still you still have still a pretty nice snow so it's uh yeah yeah pretty we'll awesome. have to plan a trip to come out and ride some powder then <laughs> yeah and there's definitely some some terrain too that it's like not a not lacking in steep terrain too so it's pretty yep. cool sweet <laughs> Right on, dude. Well, hey, thanks for coming and chatting with me. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me on. I don't know why I always do this. I always end the show and I keep on forgetting I got bonus questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got to do my bonus questions. All right. So what is a skill you haven't learned, but wait, what is a skill you want to learn, but haven't yet? Um, Probably rock climbing. I've done like a very small amount of it, but it's I really enjoy it. I want to get into that more in the summertime. Super like, fun. like legitimate ropes and 
the whole nine. Yeah, I mean, nothing too gnarly. I don't want to get hurt in the off season too bad, but uh, but just, yeah, I just go out and climb some rocks, have a good time. And there's some stuff up there around Snoqualmie Pass, isn't there? Oh yeah, yeah. There's a whole bunch like right here, and then also a good amount just down the road. Killer. Yeah. All right. So if you were living in a tribe community, what would you offer? Uh, go with music. What do you play? Uh, grew up playing piano and uh, started playing guitar a few years ago. Cool. Yeah. Uh, what are what are key components that you would expect out of the tribe? Maybe like the top three. Uh, food. <laughs> uh, and shelter and weapons. I guess <laughs> if it's a tribe, you gotta. <laughs> Stay alive out there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, okay. Last one. Uh, if the system we're all dependent on collapses tomorrow, what would be the first thing that you would do? Oh, I'm stealing a sailboat and going out to the tropical islands. <laughs> I'll just live on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> right on, right on. Well, cool, <laughs> dude. I'm, I look forward to riding with you at some point this, uh, this winter. I'd be sick. Yeah, definitely. I'll Lock try to get in the boat. I'll try to keep up. <laughs> like I'll be, I'll be the guy way back there. <laughs> but then I'll still no, say that I, you know, I got to ride with him. <laughs> right on. Hey, thanks for coming on Aqua Brain. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was a good time. Thanks for joining us on this installment of Aqua Brain Chats on Aqua Brain TV. Check us out at Brain Aqua. Is that you subscribe to us? Is that you subscribe to Ryan? This is a video we think you'll like.